You know, if they can get into their rhythm, their game plan, they usually have the, the ring IQ to, you know, do, you know, to execute their game plan. They, that usually swings in their favor. Well, here we're now down to what we've been looking for. This is Jorge Luis Munzia. And he is the challenger of our man Zab Judah, who is next up. But right. this right now is the interest of Mr. Moon Mungia here. No, this you, man is from Honduras. You with a record of 13 and 7. Four KOs. Fighting in the welterweight division here. So this is this will be interesting. Oh yeah. I can't wait to see uh I'm, I'm interested to see how Zabio looks and then see see Jab like he's about to come in. And here, there's his record. Zab Judah, we know the name well, 42 and 9. Known around the world. Held him from Las Vegas out here tonight. And there he is. You see, now here's him a few straps. As you see the ring interest of our man Zab Super Judah. He said, we want to make sure we get that straight tonight. Zab Super Judah is in the building. He certainly had an illustrious career up until this point. This looks to be one of his uh, comeback fights. I think so, man. Uh, I'm interested in seeing. Um, I think I think he's going to be fine. I, I, I just want to know if the speed is still there. I mean, we were talking about a few years ago when I saw him fight. The savvy was definitely. Yeah. I mean, you could definitely tell this is a smart man in the ring or a well seasoned fighter. So uh, I'm interested in seeing if uh, the god speed is still with him. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah, I mean, he certainly. You know, he was a guy that was you know one of the top welterweights, junior welterweights in the, the world at a certain point. So I mean. You know, I don't think you lose that, but I think, you know, like we talked about earlier, you know, see if the hand speed's still there. See if the footwork's still there. Yeah. See if there's any ring rust. You know, that is going to be uh, the question we have for Zab Judah tonight. Zab Super Judah tonight. Yeah, it is. There it is. That's right. Zab Super Judah making his way, way to the ring right now. And this crowd is, is certainly excited. The, the, the electricity definitely picked up, I'll say, Oh yeah. in the last 15 minutes. So... Zab's a name. Zab, Zab has a name. He has credibility, especially around here. You know what I mean? You know, a lot of these guys grew up watching Zab Judah. Yeah. You know, especially, I, I'd be surprised if uh, somebody like Derek Webster didn't look up to a southpaw like Zab Judah. You know? So uh, I, I think I think he's had such an effect on, you know what I mean, mo uh, many of the fighters that we've seen today. Some of the fighters that, you know what I mean, were fighting in amateurs earlier. They, you know. Uh, Shinar Bunch trained with his brothers, and you see how good he came out. He won one fighter of the night. So, you know, his imprint on this city, even though it's not overstated, you know what I mean, as it is in New York for him, it still felt it. Yeah, yeah the people still love him. Yeah. Again, had a, had a chance to spend a moment to uh, last night with the champ, and he's in certainly uh, great spirits. We're very excited. He made that clear, just ready to get back out there and, and do work. Um, Certainly alluded to the fact that he would defeat his opponent, but really didn't make a big deal about that. Like I said, it's here, uh, you know, to do business right now. And, and so, you know, that that's exciting to hear. Not a lot of this and that and blah, blah, blah. He didn't do a lot of that. And, you know, obviously he's been a guy in the past that has been known for that kind of thing. Not so much as we turn it back over to Brother Diamante. This is Casper recording artist, songwriter, actress, minister,
And there you have it. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event, but there is one more fight after this, so don't go anywhere. So there we have it. Mike the Beast Hilton fighting after this. We do have our brother Mike Hilton, Eric George, for a six round after gentlemen, this, but this is Zab Judah and Jorge Mingia. the Sun National Bank Center here in Trenton, New Jersey, for our main event of the evening. And it's all being brought to you courtesy of Boss Lady Promotions. This battle is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Chairman Tony Orlando, Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr. Introducing your three judges scoring this contest from ringside. Mark Constantino, Henry Graham, and Lawrence Layton. At the Saturday of the night, your third man in the ring will be Ronald Bashir. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 10 rounds of boxing scheduled in the welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he wears black with white trim. He weighed in at an even 142 pounds. This professional record, 13 victories against seven defeats. He has four wins coming by way of knockdown. Now is he going to use presentamos de que cusicar bajo Honduras. Jorge Chele Munguia. Munguia. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. Zab looks uh, pretty good, pretty physically uh, good condition. Oh yeah, man, he looks way better than most of them, most yeah. 39 year olds. Yeah, well, here yeah. is our main event, ladies and gentlemen. Ten rounds of boxing. Zab Judah, Jorge Munguia. Zab Judah has been three years. Oh, man. This man's anxious. His bounce is on, and he's serious. And his socks are serious. Looks like he has his face on him. And now I will leave you guys with that one as we get going. That's actually pretty awesome. I didn't think about that. So if you guys do that, yeah, Broner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean. I think Jab right now is exactly what we thought. Like you know, he's slowing. He's, he's taking his time. He's getting a feel for it again. I think. I think he's establishing that he's faster than this guy already. Oh my! The power yeah. is clear early here. Yeah, I don't think. Man, I don't think oh is in his weight class. Oh, he's and, holding on for dear life right now. Zab Judah working out. Mugia looks to be in trouble. Oh my, it looks way worse than looking for clarity from the official. No, I think Zab ready to go back to work here. They didn't count it as a knockdown. I think, again, yeah, I think Judah's looking to finish this quick. Yeah, yeah it looks I mean, like easy prey right now. The ones, the twos, the flurry right now is is massive. The onslaught with Zuda, Zab Judah, I can't even say it because it's so serious. I feel like he's zooting me over here with yeah. these blows. What I'm saying is, uh, you got to think about it. You know, Judah's used to fighting world title contenders. I mean, you know, people like Amir Khan, Floyd Mayweather. You know, you name down the list, yeah. right? And he's fighting the guy who's 13 and 7. And he's basically saying to himself, you're kidding me. And there you go. And there's a blow shot to the ribs. And Moon Gear could be in trouble. He complains to the official. Oh, that, no, actually that the blow was low. Yeah. But I, I, I think that the problems had, had mounted far beyond that blow ahead of, of time. So here's Zab Judah again. As you said, Brother Lubin, 
used to being in here with perhaps a different caliber fighter. No disrespect yeah. to Brother Munguia here, but he could be a little bit out of his league, dare I say. Uh, could be. What's my job to put it mildly, yeah. sir? Give me a break. What do you want me to do? I'm telling you the truth, man. Listen, you know, this isn't like, this isn't like, you know, the guy who has eight fights with like 80 amateur bouts or something like that. Yeah. No, he's in a ring with a world. This guy has fought the best on the planet and for the most part has won. And so having a guy who's, you know, he's only got about 20 fights and, you know, I mean, not a ton of experience on the world stage to go up against Zab Judah. Yeah, you know, look, you know, this is this was, you know, what I mean, Preparation was key. A, yeah, a, yeah, a yeah. very tough mountain to climb. Yeah. And and it seems evident here in this first round as Zab Judah has completely yeah. gone to town. There goes the mouthpiece. There goes yeah, the mouthpiece. Off the off the right overhand, right? And that's what they said. His right hand like Zab Judah. Right that was it, G Depp. His, no, that, his, the mouthpiece. It went. His oh, eyes man. are not with him right now. Yeah, that, that, let's pick that up, Mr. Official. Let's get that. Ding guy. ding. There's first first round. Wow. Zab Judah, look at it. Right hand like Zab Judah. Can we run it back, Chad? One more. Come on, Chad. It was too serious. One no, more. Sir. One more. Here it is. Right hand like Zab Judah. Watch it. Oh, look at Evil it. My piece. My piece gone. Get your get your dental game. Yeah, they're gonna Call have to somebody. I think they're gonna have a doctor check because he took quite a bit of abuse. Yeah, we, yeah, we need to talk to round. somebody over here. Yeah. I, this, this might not be safe. I'm surprised. This might not be safe. You know, look, I, I give him this much. He got out the first round. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, that's tough. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure Zab has put plenty of people out in the first round. Yeah. Zab's been putting a lot of pressure on him in this yeah. fight. And he's a lot of, just in that first round, I mean, so much pressure. So, so Such a calculated uh, precision uppercut right there. And then he follows that up, traps him in the corner with a right hook and then a, a right that's, uppercut. I think what he's doing, man, I think, yeah, that, that shot was kind of low. And he caught him with, did hit him right on the thigh. Yeah, you, you know. And, and he's been going that body very well. The body to the head, and it's been working out very well for him. So Zab's, Zab's a disciplined fighter. I mean, you don't get, you know, I think he understands the benefits of going to the body. Well, here we are, round two. Back at it. We don't know if we will venture beyond this. It did not look like the indicators would suggest that we will see a round three. We can only hope for the best and hope for the best for Brother Munguia. Because Zab Judah right now is feeling like it's about 93 at this point, And that's the way he looks out here. Oh, what I do like, though, is that uh, when Munguia came in, he's moving around a little bit more. You know what I mean? He's not standing. He, you know, he's just not standing toe-to-toe. -to -toe. You know what I mean? He seems to be relaxed, and he's trying to – I think he's trying to use his jab a little bit. I'm impressed that he came back out here. I got to give him respect for that because that was vicious. Oh, and there's an uppercut right there. Well, he is a fighter. I mean, you know, the obligatory clash of heads among two uh, uh, among the southpaw and the orthodox guy. Both yeah, men will shake it off and, and be back at him. And that's what happens sometimes when you get the southpaw versus orthodox matchup. Yeah. It happens quite a bit. And, again, it's not, it, you know, rarely ever see. It's not like... And no one's doing it on purpose, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. the way your footing is, just the in. way you're slipping. Both of you guys a lot of times are slipping in the same direction, so. Right. But again, he catches him with a that combination there from Judah. Look at him, there he goes again. Unleashing. I think, think Manjian needs to use his jab a little bit more, but I think he's over. I think it's about to be over. Oh, yeah, wow, and that's that. And over. that's that. Right hand like Sam Judah. We see you, chap. Oh, my. We saw you, sir. And he told us. He told us. We had to roll the fight time post back. Check the fight time. Facebook page, Zab Judah told you last night the knockout was coming, and there you have it. Forget the commentary. Why talk about it? Oh, yeah. when you do it, there's nothing to talk about. Listen, um, it, look, it was simple. He set it up with some body shots. He came over the top with that hook. I mean, he forced his hand down with the hooks to the body, and he was throwing the right hooks to the body. And Quick I work. He saw it open, yeah. He Quick saw it work. Open. This is a, look, this was a world-class Hall of Fame fighter versus... A, 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 someone who's hoping to be an up-and-coming prospect. And, Gets you know respect I mean? to Jorge Munguia for yeah. stepping in there. As you said, Brother Lubin, he knew who he was fighting. Yeah. He took the fight and hats off to that man again as a competitor coming in here yeah. to do work. But again, coming in here against a, a, a typhoon is, is something else, though. But you know, hey, if you're going to walk out of your house into it and you know the storm is out there, hey, you can call the man crazy. I'll call him courageous tonight. 
But there's that man, Zab Judah, right here, busy. You see the work right from the word go, yeah. and good night it was. And there it is, Brooklyn in the house. Yeah, that was, that was, man, that right hook, straight left hand was just, I don't know, it was just devastating. Like, it, again, you knew it right off the bat. I wanted, I was really interested in seeing if his speed was still with him. And it's, it's very it, evident. It, it seemed like it was, but, uh, you know what I mean, again, with the opponent he was fighting, I think, you know what I mean, I would have loved to have seen him up against, you know, you know, uh, maybe not, maybe not a top 10 guy, you know what I mean, but a top 20. But now, you know now I mean? what do you think? Rango, what do you think, though, moving forward? With, obviously, this guy, Brother brother Mugia here, again, yeah. no disrespect to him, but not the experience. Right. Perhaps, and, and, and I, there I say perhaps, but the, not the skill level. So what does this do in terms of value for a Zab Judah, obviously, who has intentions on moving forward and reigniting the career? What, what do you say? What does this do for him, though? I think it does a lot, actually. I think what it is, is he came out there and he handled business fast. The worst thing that could have happened is this fight would have went 10 rounds. If this fight would have went 10 rounds against no, there's, there's no way a Zab Judah 10 years ago was letting this fight go 10 rounds. Right. So, uh, there's your winner, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. of our welterweight contest here at Main Event. There he is, Zab Super Judah. The man, uh, Brooklyn Zone. No, oh, man. This was, a uh, look, this was an impressive performance. Then you they come I mean? with the big, too. They, they, they pop in with the Frank White just popped in. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> Rest very, in very peace fitting. to the late great Christopher Wallace on the on the PA right now. Zab to the right oh, there yeah. with the right hand. We saw it tonight. He got he yeah. got the flash and the dash for you. He put stars on his shorts. I didn't even I didn't even get to mention that. On yeah, his I know. Right? We were talking. You know, about yeah, he yeah, wore whatever he wants. Right. Zab did whatever he Picture wants. on your socks. Yeah. Whatever. He could have gave us tassels, sequins on the stars, right? And it would have been all the way serious regardless and you saw that man and, and again I just want to give a shot I don't know if you can really salute a guy to take a whooping like Mr. Mungia did but hey he went out there yeah. and so I, I'm not mad at him and I'm not mad at you fight time 188 countries can you believe this Toledo Ohio oh boy yeah, so anyway, my man here, Wrangle, moving yeah. in the building, Evan Smith down there, gentlemen, Zab Judah. Zab Judah, man. Uh, Zab, man, he looked great out there tonight. You know, he looked sharp. Uh, maybe some flashbacks to the 90s, early 2000s over there. But, you know, the thing is, with Zab, you know, obviously you guys were discussing the caliber of fighter, you know, that he, his opposition was. You know, I think the key is, you know, seeing, you know, taking this fight, using it as momentum, and then, you know, maybe another fight a little bit similar, and then uh, gradually work your way up to maybe those those bigger fights again to see, you know, to see what you still have left in the tank. Boxing is one of those sports that's hard to give up, but, you know, he, he, he was he wasn't tested tonight. I think you're going to need to see him get a little bit more tested with, and gradually work his way up uh, in, the, in these future now, battles. Now, now, now Rango, talk about that. Where, where is he really? You, you're a fight guy. Now, I'm not asking you to critique Zab Judah and yeah. who's on what level and all. No, 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 no. You're a boxing man, though. Evaluate it. Moving forward, if you're his people right now, right, right, right. how are you feeling about our prospects? You feel good. Here's the thing. What you you weren't here. This wasn't supposed to be a challenge. What this was supposed to be was a showcase of do you still have the same speed, the same kind of power? Do you have the same intellect in the ring? Are you still able to move? Are you still able to process information the same way that you used to? And he showed that. And I think that's going to open the door for him to get another fight or to get another fight with, a, with maybe an opponent that he wants to pick. It won't be the highest level opponent, but I think it'll be like a journeyman, right. someone where he can enter back into the fray of like, you know, the top 10 contenders. Uh, I think, you know what I mean, when you walked in there, when he walked into that ring, I assumed this should have been domination. And that's exactly what he did. He yeah, went in yeah. there, he started throwing his shots, he was whipping to the body right off the bat. You know what I mean? And he basically, look. Again, he showcased everything that he needed. He's still fast. He's still strong. He's still Zab Judah. He's still Zab Judah. And the right hand will put your mouthpiece oh, yeah. no, on that sorry. fight time mat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what can happen. So, you know, again, what do you do? But move on if you're Zab Judah. We thank all of our fighters thus far as we gear up for our final bout of the evening. The hometown man, though. We talked about guys from the area. This yeah. man is from Trent. He is Mike Hilton coming up. He's going to take on Eric George out of Niagara Falls. And so, 
Again, though, your main event, Zab Judah, did not disappoint us tonight. Gave you quick work. It was impressive. Brother Lubin says the prospects are serious. Yeah. Who will get in there with Zab Judah? Give him an opportunity to re advance his career. And obviously, it's an exciting time, and we look forward to seeing that. I'm glad you saw it on fight time, though. We appreciate that, and you, we do appreciate our friends here working in conjunction with us, and 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 thank you so much for all our people over there at the Food Food People and all of that. And, and, and C Sports, and C Sports, and absolutely. Man, shout out Challenge Entertainment, very nice. Uh, we call it much appreciated to them. So thank you guys for, for your help working with us. And, you know, it's, it's been a pleasure here tonight, and it's definitely been a joy to work with the people at Invicta.net. Invicta.net. Check them out because they can get your situation together and put it on in grand fashion. Or, hey, if you want to keep it small, they do it all. So make sure you get the hold of Chad and his people, great crew. We thank you so much as the Fight Time crew tonight and all of our team at Fight Time. Great thanks and enduring all the struggles that it takes to put together a production like this. Thank you, Chris Donaldson. Again, director extraordinaire. Again, he and, he and Big Chad in there, producers extraordinaire. What can you say? Again, Khalif Shears, CEO of Fight Time. Again, the young man has endured quite a bit, so we tip our cap to him. Young black man, yeah. commerce in Trump's America. We love and salute to the president. Everybody calm down. He's not leaving office. Change your attitude, please. I'm uh, sorry. No, Moving no, no. on, Mr. Lubin. Again, I'm, just, I might run for office one day, too. Hey, just I'm, not in my town. I'll, I'll go free. Let's Thank go. you, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, but I do want to give a quick shout-out to Tatiana Sims and uh, Gene Sims over there. Oh, and our, and our people at Boss them. Lady. Yeah. I was going to say, I was just going to make a big finale, <laughs> you know, for my for my lovely ladies and everybody at, at Boss Lady Promotions. Right, 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 right. They have gotten it done here tonight, a, a, a great show from start to finish. And so, they, they, they have. I, I, look, again, you know what I mean? I think, um, you know, they put together a pretty good show here. And, you know, yep. Miss Renee and her whole team. Yeah. And getting everybody, Zab Judah to come. Everybody in, this, in the Judah family. I yeah. uh, got to tell you, we met his brother, everybody. You know, it's been fun kicking it out here. Trend, New Jersey. Yeah. Rock, rock to the planet, rock. Trend, don't stop. Yeah, what y'all know about that? Glass City in here, 419. Thank you. So I, I think right now we're going to have a word. Oh, is it Miss Renee? I thought Miss Renee was going to say something. Brother Diamante, excellent work from him. Again, he is your Brooklyn Nets announcer. Don't forget that. David Diamante has done an excellent job. The man holds down the Barclays Center. You know what, I think uh, I want to make a point that, uh, you know, Zab Judah, um, so, you know, he's fighting in New Jersey, not too far away from his hometown of, you know, New York or Bro Brooklyn. So, you know, I think that, you know, draws a lot of his family out here and, you know, really maybe, you know, made for a little bit more, um, you know, he was a little bit more, yeah, yeah. A, bit of a bigger scene and he's very, you know, hyped up for this fight uh, as a result. Yeah, I think, you know, I mean, I think it was a big deal for him to come back here and establish that he's still, you know, I mean, a credible fighter. You Indeed. Know and it, it, even if he isn't like you know number one in his division, yeah, you know what I mean. I, th I think I think you can you can expect him to compete in the top ten, yeah, top twenty. You know what I mean? If one forty one now, yeah. I mean, although you, you have guys like Terrence Crawford who are moving up right. and stuff like that, um, yeah. you know, Crawford and um, Post still holding down that division. Yeah, but what I think is I think you know what I mean having him challenged within the top ten, top fifteen rank, I think that's a I think that's a real possibility. Well said, brother Lou, because he, he did make it clear though he, he's still a respectable force. Yeah. And so we, we look forward to the future for the chap. Zab Super Judah, he certainly owned that tonight. Yeah. That could have been tricky if he had any sort of mishaps, that super thing would have went crazy. Oh, yeah. Right, as we gear up here for our final bout, it will be a six-round affair in the cruiserweight division featuring, again, hometown man Mike Hilton versus Eric George from Niagara Falls. Still local guys, nonetheless, like like a lot of our guys, really all of our guys here tonight have, for the most part, except for our brother 
a Wimble, a Wimbledo coming over from Ghana. Appreciate our, our African brothers and sisters always. And we know we have a strong contingent over there, strong fight time contingent over in Ghana. Yeah. Shouts out to Richard Comey. We know Richard Comey was a featured fighter on, on this uh, platform. Appreciate all, the, all of our uh, brothers and sisters over there. North you know, Carolina in the building, too. VA was in the house, so we had some East Coast. Definite uh, pride going on. Scranton, PA in here. Worcester, Massachusetts in here. Bristol, PA in here. So thank you to everybody who came together to bring this to you around the world. Honduras in the building as well. I think it's, uh, you know what I mean? It seems like there's a whole... Zeb still has uh, that that star power about him like when he walks in the ring. Yeah, right. you know, he still has that. Yeah, the electricity definitely still there. Yeah. So. And, and, when, and once you establish yourself in boxing as a name, I mean, you always stay, um, yeah. you know, pretty re relevant to a degree. I mean, I know Shannon Briggs, uh, another guy, an older yeah. fighter, still fighting. He's kind of putting himself back out there. So you know, there's a few guys like that. You know, and once 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 you uh, yeah once once you guys you know once you're an established fighter. You know, people know you, regardless. Well, while we have a quick moment here, we want to bring in a, a, an, an interview, ladies and gentlemen. And we are we have a special guest joining us right now, ringside here. The man has been, he's been running around all night, handling commerce, arranging, being executive extraordinaire. I'm going to nominate him for executive of the year. <laughs> Thanks. He is the he is the one and only, none other than Mr. Khalif Shears Sr., CEO of Fight Time, our host network here tonight. As we got this guy, Khalif, how do you like that? Did you did you book that this guy here? With, I mean, oh, he whoa, went to whoa, 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 whoa! I mean, anything is is capable on Fight Time Live. You see, we have this guy up here dancing and wow. Okay, whoa! Wait, 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 he came. He's so serious. He put the. The leopard do rag on. He said leopard oh. print. He's not done. He's going well, he's out and said, wait. He's oh, going he with the pants. He has his cheetah oh, dance. Oh my skins. god. He's got on cheetah dance. Only on fight pants. time. Danskin pants. Cheetah pants on fight time. Are you serious? Look at this. And look, this boy wow. had the bandana. Where do you find the tan khaki bandana? Whoa. Look at this. Whoa. Look at this. We will get to this Whoa. interview in a moment. I, uh oh. Now that's Whoa. a position. Uh the owl, oh like, my whoa, goodness, now, I don't know. Whoa. Well, ladies, take heed around the world. Fight time live. I mean, fight time live. I don't know, you know, we can ingest the amazement of this, whoa, whoa. but we want to suggest it to a lot of our female contingent around the planet, and we'll just leave it at that. And, and but you had the lipper print as well. Wow, so hats off to this man. Oh, oh, look, he's not done. I think though. there's more. Yeah, I think he's asking more. him to come in. Oh my oh, goodness, wow. it's getting tricky. Wow. Leopard print. Now you're getting. Whoa, what is he about to do? Helpful assistance. Uh oh. I, I I don't know if I like this. I don't know. This this seems a bit strange, but it is on fight time. Uh oh. Fight time, fight time, fight time. Hold on to your seats here, folks. I bet you this photographer didn't bargain for this when he when he took his assignment. <laughs> and you know this isn't covered under our insurance waiver. Oh! oh! And you pause. You silly. You are silly, sir. Do what you do. And if you're gonna wear leopard danskin pants, you better turn it out. That's all I can say. Back to the business. Wow. Fight time. CEO, Khalif Shears. I was going to say what. Uh, I don't know where we go with after that. What? Leopards, Danskin pants, agility. You say what? You run the company. Talk to us about it. Son. Well, you know, Fight Town, we always want to keep something live. We always want to keep it robust. We always want to keep it interesting. We want to bring to you not only the best in pugilism, but we also want to bring to you entertainment. Your entertainment. Right now, we're broadcasting in 188 countries right now. So we just want to bring something new, something exciting, something innovative to the game. Well, you've certainly done that, sir. This has been an excellent show. Again, we, we, we wish you and your team all the best. Uh, again, talk about maybe what's coming up for Fight Time. Where does it go? And, and what is it that you hope to, to establish in the future in the long-term goals? Definitely. Coming up for Fight Time, we got a lot of big things. We have uh, 
a huge celebrity situation coming up, which I won't speak too much on. Right. I'll, I'll let the world that, ponder yeah. about that. You know, right. we can't speak about that. Or watch TMZ. But anyway. Watch TMZ. You know, Fight Time, we really just been innovating, turning things up. You know, we, we the plan for Fight Time is to basically bring fight, MMA, Muay Thai, kickboxing, Kempo to the world. All yep. forms of pugilism. So every way you can fight, Fight Time will have it for you. Definitely. That's Definitely. where it is. Even in virtual reality, you know? Boom. So the technological advancements do not stop. Thank you, Khalif Shears, for stopping real quick because I know you got to go get the next hundred million. Appreciate you. Love to see your stuff up there on the big jumbo try. You killed them with the ring, Matt. Thank you very much to you and your team. And again, Brother Donaldson, everybody, our friends at Invicta.net. Thank you, thank you, thank you all. Thank you, Savvy Corsell. <laughs> thank you very much. The live, that's it. Khalif Shears in the house, CEO of Fight Time. As we bring our guys back to the scene, Brother Evan Smith, Brother Lubin here, Wrangle Lubin in the spot with me. I am Savvy Sinclair. Real quick, let's break for our ring announcer. And we'll be back here. Boss Lady Promotions. Your three judges scoring this contest from ringside. Mark Francitino, Henry Grant, and Lawrence Clayton. At the sound of the bell, your third man in the ring will be Ronald Bashir. And now, ladies and gentlemen, six rounds of boxing scheduled in the cruiserweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he wears solid black trunks. He weighed in at 199 pounds. This professional record, four victories against 13 defeats. He hails from Niagara Falls, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Eric George. George. And his opponent across during fighting out of the red corner. He wears the black with green trim. He weighed in at a ready and even 200 pounds. His professional record, a perfect one. Four fights, four victories, all four victories coming by way of knockout. From right here in Trent, New Jersey, ladies and gentlemen, Mike the Beast Hilton. Hilton. All right, so. Here we go, final bout of the evening here. Cruiserweight, yep. six round affair. Hometown man Mike Hilton on display now. Eric George here from Niagara Falls here to disrupt the situation. Let's find out what we have now. Will it be the conclusion that we would expect based on what we've seen here tonight? Obviously these men will not let us down here. Mike the Beast Hilton. Eric, I am not Paul George. Here we go. <laughs> he said, Eric, I'm not Paul George. Oh, uh, he's starting off with good jabs. George, uh, call it. George right away with, the, with jabs. Set the tone early. I think Beast right now is uh, trying to find his range. This looks like, like, like it could be a, 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 a real tight war on the interior here. It looks like we might be setting up for something like that. I think what Beast right now is trying to do is he's trying to land a hard shot. Those body blows, he doesn't want to keep taking those. Absolutely not. Yeah, and Eric George is doing the right thing. He's keeping his hands up tight. I think he pretty much knows, hey, this guy is, this guy can knock people out. And uh, he's trying to use his jab a little bit, which I think is a smart thing for him to do. There's a little, there was a little slip was a there. Slip. Look, yeah, George lost his footing there. Looks like trying to deliver the punch, and feet came out from underneath him. But nonetheless, you, 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 you like the fact that George comes in here, though. He, he looks relaxed, though. He knows he's fighting in this man's backyard and all the rest of that. And, and you like the way he started this situation, that's for sure. I like how he's using his jab, you know what I mean? You know, but he doesn't have to worry about that right hand. I, I, you know what I mean? He's bringing it right back to his face, but, you know, if he starts catching any of those, I think he's going to have himself in a little. He's going to find a little bit of an issue. Hinton was over the top. He says, he says though, he's got him. Let's his corner know. He's I think, in command. I don't know. I think his corner sees the uppercut. He's leaning forward with that jab. And there you just saw it there with the left. He gave him a little shot there. Underneath. 
as Hilton starting to settle down a little bit now himself. He's George still with, aggressive. Well, you, you, you can't beat a guy who hits like that, letting them come forward. You got to keep them on their back foot, you know, or keep them moving, or keep their feet moving. So if you let if you let somebody like that just walk you down the whole fight, you're in a you're in a bit of a, you're gonna have a bit of an issue. Yeah, and then uh, Hilton here has been going to the body quite a few times, so trying to put that groundwork in now. I think right now what's happening is. Yeah, the problem is, is George isn't initiating contact. Well, he like this work here, though. Some bombs going out from both men. As they, like I said, that work in the interior. Oh, yeah, well, these are cruiserweights. These guys are both going to hit each other hard. And neither one of these guys want to go six rounds, to be honest with you. Right. These guys want to end this early. And so, uh. Um, yeah, big boys in here. Yeah. Big boys don't like that. Look. You know. One of the things we're seeing here is that uh, we call it a lot of these punches. They're coming a little wider. I think whoever tightens up their punches first, I think he's going to be the one that does the most damage okay. in the oncoming rounds. You know, what I mean, uh, Eric George right now, he's been landing that jab pretty successfully. He's been doing a pretty good job with it. Uh, I think once he starts to find his razor, his right hand, I think you're going to see a little bit of a difference in the complexion of the fight. One in the books on this one as we move. Into the into the second round, like you said, brother Lubin, the man who can who can tighten up and, and sharpen things up, so to speak, yeah. looks to be the most effective because because both guys are getting touched. That's pretty that's pretty clear though. They 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 made it and established a fight where okay, we're gonna work on this interior, we're gonna do this toe to toe dance, and and so since that's the choice, like you said, it, it could be a short one because you can we the, the power is definitely palpable. And, and obviously, as we sit here ringside, it, it is pretty clear. That, that these young men are, are, are certainly feeling the leather, so we know that. Yeah, and George is coming right in. Now is that, uh, I think what we're seeing right now is that, uh, you know, Be Beast can't allow this guy to get confidence. If he starts allowing George to get confidence, you're going to see jabs show up a little bit more. You know what I mean? You're going to see more risks being taken, which might play well for Beast, but at the same time, you know what I mean? I, I think he doesn't want he doesn't want the momentum to shift away from his favor. Remember, this is kind of an audition, right? You're just you're coming in after Zab. You want to make sure you finish this fight quick. You know what I mean? Right, Zab's very very is. important for, for Hilton to, to again remain impressive. Obviously you got the four and zero record, but in adding to that, you want to keep showing the people that it is worth their dollar to get out here and see you. Exactly. Exactly. But again, I think Eric George is doing the right thing with the jab. You know what I mean? He's going to the body. He's trying to take the wheels away from, from Beast. Yeah. You know, as someone who's been in the ring with him a few times in sparring, um, you know, he'll let you. And that's Hilton. You're talking yeah, about Hilton. Hilton. He'll, he'll, uh, be, uh, Mike will let you top, throw punches. Top, you know what I mean? He'll let back. you throw punches. And he'll wait for you to take a over long, top, like top. needing a long breath of air. And then he's going to come in. And then, like, that's when he starts doing the most amount of damage. So, you know what I mean? There, this might be one of those, like, possum techniques that he's using. Right so. And again, whoever starts, whoever starts throwing sharper punches, I think is going to win this fight. Well, here you see Hilton right there trying to work off, off the tie up there. And he comes over the top with the last right. But again, we've seen this quite a bit, though. And, and, and George sort of leaning in, almost creating the clinch, if you will. <laughs> but, but there you see there, yeah. Hilton. I think his corner. I think his corner was telling Beast to, or telling Hilton to throw those uppercuts, those right hand uppercuts. You saw him earlier in the round. Oh, and there you just and right good on body you shots, Good for it. body shots. And there goes the mouthpiece again. Uh oh, problems. Good work, center of the ring. Uh oh, there's a, a serious shot right there. I think they're gonna call time right now. They're gonna call time. George showing. A little bit of frustration, but probably a welcomed intermission. Yeah. I, I, those body blows look like they were they, they landed pretty hard. Yeah, right? those are pretty thudding body blows right there. Right on, right on. There's another There's one. Another one. Right on. Oh boy! Oh my goodness! And look at him as he has found the range now, and the target is clear. I think. I think. I think Hilton right now, what he's doing is, is that uh, 
Look at he's, he's committing himself to the body in case this goes later on in the fight. Because if it does, I think he's going to be able to, you know what I mean, trust that his power is going to win him all, win him over in the later rounds. And again, that uppercut, he's laying, he's going to fight. If, listen, if George keeps leaning forward like that when he comes into the ropes, Mike's going to find that uppercut. He's going to find a range for it. And so... Well, he so, seems like he, he, he's really comfy with things now, though, and, and yeah. started to enjoy things. Looks like now just picking these shots and, and setting up here. Again, he's, he's trying to go for those uppercuts. Yep. It's two in the two. books. Uh, look, you know, he, he walked into these shots. He, again, whoever throws the straighter punches, I think, is going to win the more crisp shots. Is probably going to win this fight. You know what I mean? Because both of these guys right now look like they got pretty good chins and they look like they're willing to trade. Um, what I'm seeing here, though, I mean, and the only thing that, you know I mean, I would worry about if I was in George's corner right now is the amount of body shots he's taking. You know, I mean, he's taking, you know, he needs to either step away or, some, or tighten up or sit down a little bit more. And he can't do things like that. You can't trade with a power punch. Right. You know what I mean? So, uh, jam, look at this. Beast comes in with those body shots. Especially not flailing like that. You're asking for trouble. Yeah, exactly. You know? You're too wide open. These are, these are hard hitters. So, I. I think that if I was in his corner, that's probably my biggest concern. If I was in Beast's corner, I think the yeah, number one thing I'll say is, hey, man, you got to shorten that uppercut a little bit. You know what I mean? Be a little more patient with him when he steps in. And uh, tighten up tighten up those hooks. If you tighten up those hooks, he tightens up the hook, I think he's going to you know, be able to put this guy away pretty quick. But, again, it all comes down to who throws the sharper shots in this fight. Well, here we are, round three. We'll find out what it is right now. Mike Hill looking impressive so far. 4-0 record on the line right now in front of his hometown crowd. And here's Eric George, though. The man from Niagara Falls says he's in here to do work. And so we're back at it. This is round three. And Mike Mike came out with a quick with a quick hook. He's using his jab. But the thing that I do like that, Eric George is moving. He's not staying around. He's not staying in front of him. Both of these guys actually came in and started respecting each other's power. You know what I mean? Right. One guy took a hit and he took a step back. You know, Beast is actually jumping back. It's one of the rarities. You don't really see Beast bounce back like that. Yeah, there's body blows in it, and his mouthpiece came out again. And there it George. is again. Yeah, the mouthpiece comes out. It's George now. You count that as a, is that a? No, a I don't think that's a knockdown. Out? I think that's a, a, a. He took the knee, but yeah. again, the mouthpiece again out for the second time. He's been really yeah, I think right now what happens is he got, he got, I think, I think he's a little fatigued. I think he's a little fatigued, and I think, I, don't, I think he's starting to run out of gas here. Right now, Beast is doing the right thing. He's continuing the body assault, and he's going to work his way up there. The problem is, is that Eric George is trying to keep up with the output, and I don't know if he has the stamina to do it. And that's going to end up, and that might land him in some big trouble in the later rounds if we get there. So, well, he was caught a left hook there, said it didn't bother him, though. Well, you know, fighter's going to tell you that. Right, but he certainly thought that was a good shot, though. But again, another nice exchange, both men. Yeah. And again, this is. There's George. There's nice work again with the left hook. George still aggressive. So, yeah, George no, certainly in the fight, that's for sure. Oh, no, no. This is a pretty close fight. I think, I, I, but again, what I'm seeing here, oh, there's a hook. That hook hurt. I think that hook hurt him bad. I think that there's hook hurt another him bad. One. Yeah, yeah. That, I think that hook hurt him really bad. You know, I mean, he doesn't look stable. His legs don't look stable. I think he's going to follow. Yeah, he's been doing a, a good job of going from the body. And then up with now, the one shot. thing. I'm interested in the refs. Here's the thing. Beast, I, think, I think Mike needs to bring his hands back quicker. Because right now what it looks like is, is that uh, that George is throwing blind. Like his eyes seem to be pointing down when right. he's throwing his upper, when he's throwing his overhands and stuff like that. It doesn't seem like he sees the target that he's aiming for. So, you know what I mean? I, I think one of the things, if he gets his hands back quicker, I think he might avoid a lot of those shots that might be, you know, those little air punches that are hitting him. Well, he's taking a couple of these right hooks here that I haven't mentioned in the last 15 seconds or so, and that has to add up. And, again, that one really wasn't as powerful, but he keeps landing that. Though. He said that when he hits two stead right hand again, and, and, and it's in close range, and he keeps tapping him on his cheek. And, and look, <laughs> hey, listen, there's only so many of those you can take. You know, yes, sir. Honestly, there's only I would so think. many you can take. And so I think uh, right now what we're looking at is... Like they're doing a the smart thing. I think both of these guys are. He's in a fight with a guy who can 
Look, Michael's in a fight with a guy who can bang a little bit. That last right. hook, again, I still think he was hurt. I think Eric George was hurt, you right. know what I mean, from one of those hooks, you know what I mean, earlier in the fight. But I, I think they're, they're going to have to – he's going to have to bring his hands back faster. That's the reason why he's getting caught with these random shots to himself. Yeah. You know, that's the, one of the bigger issues I think he's finding. Like right these, these guys are letting the hands really he fly, too. brings his hands too. back. George isn't looking. You know what I mean? But when he doesn't bring his hands back, you see George's eyes seem like they're pointed down towards the ground, and he doesn't see the target he's aiming for. So, I, you know, I mean, I, I think if, you know Mike brings his hands back a little quicker. I think you know maybe uh, we call it a lead. maybe I, I think it'll lessen the chance that you know I mean a random phantom punch catches him. Right. But right now, you know, I mean, the one thing is I will give George. He's standing in front of a guy who can hit. I was going to say any concern for Mike Hilton's camp, though, that, again, some of this is risky because uh, because of the confidence. Yeah. He sees the mark. The mark is right there yeah. for, for him to fire on constantly. Do you see, is it possible that he gets slightly careless? And, and with this guy, I, I have to think that's extremely dangerous. We've seen this situation earlier in the evening, but this seems to be more so. Uh, you know, possible in terms of the, with the power, like you said, with these guys. Well, here's the thing. You know what I mean? Right now he's going to a county. It seems like he's trying to counter punch now this round more than anything. But um, when you're in a ring with a guy, he, look, he's they're trying to build him up. And you got to get him in a ring with guys who can, you know, who can stay at his level for a little bit. Right. And right now what we're seeing is that you know eric george is able to take a hit you know what i mean i don't think eric, i don't think eric george is winning the fight i think it's a close fight though i wouldn't be surprised if he won a round or two um if you won a round right but, Cer certainly the closest affair that we've seen this evening oh yeah i think so. i think this is by far the closest fight. but uh you know what i mean he's using his jab he's but he's gone over but eric's gone but george has gone away from it like he hasn't been using it, and now Beast is actually using his jab a lot more. Right. And he's going up and down with it. He's doubling it up, and he's stepping around. You know what I mean? He's more. Tr he's trying to box him now instead of like trying to just basically slug with him. Right. And I think that's. I think that's like the best. I don't think that was the best thing for him to do. So. He's giving you the. Po you said, in other words, he's giving you the polish right now. Again, he gave you the power yeah. to begin with, and we saw that. But now, again, oh look at oh, that! Look at that uppercut. right uppercut. You said it. You said it, Lubin. You said that. Those uppercuts are gonna be there. Uh oh, now the, the right hooks now. Here we go. Oh look, he's tried it. Oh, that last one might have done it. Again, and give Eric George credit. The mouthpiece came out of his mouth, and he was ready to go. You see him right now, Mike Hill. 4-0, Trent, New Jersey, on display right now. It's fight time. His again, mouthpiece, mouthpiece again. I think they're going to take a point out or something. I think they're gonna he might be spitting it. I'm thinking he's spitting it at this point. I don't think he's spitting it. I think he might be coming out. I think they're going to definitely take a point off. Yeah, it seems like yeah, they're taking a point off for him. And there you have it. Yeah. The point on, on the mouthpiece situation. And he has to remember, you're coming into another person's home backyard. You're not going to get the benefit of doubt in any way. In any way. So you know you have to completely take it to that man yeah. and overwhelm him. And so far, that hasn't been the case. But again, yeah. Eric George has fought very valiant. And we've seen a few performances tonight, but yeah. none better than his standing in here with Hilton. I, I think uh, I think Damian Lewis was a pretty good performance, considering where he was at when he fought uh Brian Davis or Brian Daniels, right? You know but I mean? but I would I, the reason I say the difference. George has been in this right away though. It took oh, our yeah, man yeah, Lewis yeah. a minute to start the engine though. You know, and, that, and that's where no disrespect to him at all because yeah. we certainly enjoyed his performance as you said. Yeah. But again, right now with brother George here, he's been in this thing from the beginning. You can suggest maybe wearing down some, but again, still. Look. Mike Hilton cannot get careless at all. As great as he has looked, he still has to finish this thing and, and be Landing cautious those doing it. Cuts. But he keeps taking those overhands. Wow. That was a mean one. Yeah, that and was again, sick. he's still standing, which is something, look, you got to give him credit, man. You he's certainly do. And there's Mike Hilton again. These uppercuts are outrageous. He comes over the top with the right right there. And, I think, and, and look. And there he goes again. Body Aaron George right is doing there. a smart thing. He's throwing body shots right back. He's throwing those body shots right back, but I think they're affecting him now. Uh-oh. And there you go after the bell. And Mike knows he might have gotten away with one. He he, he giggles. No, and a coy gives you a coy giggle right there after the bell with a blow. But 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 what happened before the bell I think was almost treacherous in here. As you see that uppercut and look at it right there, looking and unload. Yeah, that uppercut is perfect. I mean, look, Eric George has been leaning forward. 
the entire fight. You know what I mean? And, uh, and again, you had to see it. Like, uh, uh, uppercuts are just, he was just begging for it every time, especially how he was reaching over. And remember, both of these guys have been swinging wide the whole time. Right. So you can imagine, you know what I mean, whoever throws the sharper uppercut or a sharper hook or that whatever, you know what I mean, shorter, is probably going to find a little bit of an advantage. And I think uh, that's where, you know, Hilton's finding his right now. So, again, you know, I think, you know, if George wants to get himself back in the fight, I think he needs to go back to using that jab like he did before earlier. You know what I mean? Get back to going upstairs and downstairs. And, you know, maybe he finds himself in, you know, a better and a more advantageous position. But he's only got two rounds to work. And right now, he's definitely lost the last round with the point being taken from him. Can't imagine you know, him coming back. Yeah. So here, here's Mike. He'll now early with the jab, comes right across the ring, busy, and he's still at it right now. You like this combination situation that you're getting. But there's George on the on the return, though. The retaliation is admirable, to say the least. But here he is. Mike Hill, an uppercut, comes body back up to the top. Now the jab is out here. There it is again. There's to the body with the jab, to the nose with the jab, forehead to the body, and all of it won't stop. George is, is looking like now the gas tank, could be seeping a little bit, or dare I say, is it being siphoned out right now? Because, again, it seems to be depleting at a fast rate, and Mike Hilton seems to be on the stalk now. There's the hook with the right hand. Overcome with the left. I think I think what's happening is, is that uh, he's not finding He's not using his jab because he, he, you're right. He, the, the tank seems to be a little empty with him. Yep, and he's throwing that, his hook. Listen, I will say this, though. He's getting up close. The only thing I don't like that's going on here is that, you know, Hilton is letting him. And that will, that will, that will be a knockdown there. Taking the voluntary heat. Well, that'll certainly speak to the chances of, of, of Mike Hilton going to 5-0 and oh there, especially at this juncture of the fight. You have to ask yourself, how much uh, more does George want this, you know? Smart move. He's taking his time coming back in. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. There it is. Yeah, and there it. it is. Mike Hilton will have a stop for you. Fifth round. And he it looks choice words for him after. <laughs> like it was done. Textbook. Mike Hilton goes to 5-0 and right there, ladies and gentlemen, in front of his hometown crowd. And let's take another look at this. Yeah, um, he came in there. He was looking for those body shots the whole time. But those uppercuts to the body did it to him. You know what I mean? But I did like the uppercuts he was throwing. I think the uppercuts were working really well for him. But again, right here, boom, body. Yeah. And that was just too much. And Brother George says, okay. Well, he's been digging we'll the whole fight. Man. Like, the whole fight he's been going down there. So, you know what I mean? I'm not surprised. And look, I'm surprised, you know, George lasted. Right. Right. He, it, it was an impressive, like I said, a, a valiant display. We've seen a couple tonight. Yeah. And, and and I don't think, you know, gentlemen, dare I say, I venture to say that we haven't seen a bad performance this evening from, from a, a, a victor, you know, or, or someone in a loss. I, I do not think that we've really seen, you know, a, a bad effort. Let me, say, let me put it that way, a bad effort. I, we have not seen a, a shady effort at all here this evening. No, I think so, too. I think it was a There you have it. Mike Hilton, Trenton, New Jersey, moves to 5-0 and oh, and another knockout to add to the tally. Impressive, to say the least. And there uh, it is. Looks like oh, Brian Daniels wants to fight him. Oh, oh, we have some interesting, and only on fight time can you see this. This is what it's about, ladies and gentlemen. You certainly <laughs> won't, won't this, get this anywhere. Brian Daniels, it's on time. Uh oh, well, there you go. That's one way to get your, your managers and management and agents to the table. He wants to fight. Listen. Brian Daniels, he was a winner tonight. You know these boys, this is hometown stuff. This local oh, yeah, flavor right there. Yeah, that's listen, that's man, certain. You know what I mean? Well, there it is, folks. We've had a little bit of everything here tonight. You had tassels where they didn't belong. You had sequins 
where they was worth showing off, as you see here. Brandon Robinson. Oh, yeah. My man Corley day. tricked me. He told me what it would be, and, and, and he didn't say it would be that. Then you had Andy Gonzalez busy. He came with the work and brought it from Worcester, Mass. And then my man Kelleher, Jimmy, Scranton, PA, the scrappiness of Scranton that you expect. And then this man, we just saw him, Brian Daniels, wants more work, but he was so impressed with himself, he wanted to start another fight. Worse this year, Massachusetts in the building. But look, Brian Daniels, listen, you know, I know they're in the same weight class, but this is, uh, yeah, this and then Derek Webster here brought his work. He was impressive start to finish tonight. He left out of here with a strap. That's what he came for. Oh, yeah. So we will say his, his mission was successful. There it is. Looks nice. Look, he caught a bling. Yeah, that, you always like that. Your mom loves that when she sees it. And then this man, Superman, Zab, right hand. G. Depp would be proud because he got the early stop and let people know at 39, oh, no, nobody told you I was really 19? Somebody better come see me. Look at it. There it is, flashy. Oh, my goodness, have a seat. And the mouthpiece was going, and there it was. Zab Judah, is it, like you said, 99 or 2,000? I don't know. And then the final man, this man, you just saw him, Mike Hilton. Busy from the word go, had a man in there who wanted to do toe-to-toe -to -toe and wanted to dance up close, but found out it was body work that needs to be adjusted. Fix your situation after you get up off the campus. Yeah. Mike Hilton. Trenton, New Jersey, 5-0, and oh. bang, bang, <laughs> good night. That's what it is. And this is fight time, ladies and gentlemen. And you know we don't mess around, and this is what we like to do. We're so crazy with it. We go impromptu as we bring him in real quick here. Oh, that's okay. What are we going to do with it? Here he is. I have my man Mike Hilton right now. National tournament, man. What are you talking about? Mike Hill. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, we'll get it going. Brother Mike. What's going on? How you doing, sir? I'm good. Sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Impressive victory. You moved to 5-0, five, oh, five KOs, man. You did it in front of your hometown tonight, man, in front of the crowd. Uh, just talk to us a little bit quick about the energy of that. When, as a fighter, man, coming in this situation, what does it do to you, man? I mean, it, 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 it always, it's always a push. It's always, you know, it's a blessing just to have my family yep. and friends to come out and, you know, to, uh, you know, to watch me perform. And you know, even when I'm tired, I hear them yelling, you stay, let's go, let's work. Push, dig deep. You know, I hear them and I hear my corner. Like, I mean, it's like... like you don't understand fighting is, is just not physical, it's mental and it's spiritual, you know, and I get that energy from them, and I feed off of it. Well, you, you certainly fed off it, man. You brought the energy uh, right away, though. It, it was an interesting fight, though. We saw you guys put the work on the interior. You know, George yeah. was a valiant guy, tough fighter, uh, yeah. obviously. But again, talk to that talk to that transition, though. Like you said, you came in, he was he was coming at you, bringing it to you, but you, you, you were able to shift gears on him, man, and totally turn the energy. Yeah, because, um... No, just basically I started listening to my corner. You know, it took me a little while to really get, to really get warmed up. Um, you know, once I start you know, using my jab more, working down my jab, hooking up the jab. I, when I started to relax, when I started to settle in more around the fourth round, that's how we started to settle in. And you know, I was able to pick up the pace now. And like once I started seeing the body shots hurt them, you know, I just kept digging down there. Yeah, and, and we talked about that during the fight. You'll hear that too when you get a chance to see this replay. But again, speaking about that work downstairs. That uppercut, though, bro. Oh, yeah. Talk about that. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. that was clear, though. Yeah, that was serious. Uppercut, that was serious. Um, I seen him, I seen some film on him. It was from a couple years ago. Um, obviously, he's, he's a lot better than, um, than I expected. And he, and he fought a lot cleaner than I thought he was going to fight. But um, but he kept ducking his head and he kept leaning in. So, you know, I had already worked on, you know, getting uppercut off because I was seeing he was going. I knew at, as the time would go on that he would start going back to some old bad habits. Mm. And that was one of them, you know, him coming in like that. And that's when I, I just started setting it up. And... You know, I practice a lot of um, affirmation and visualization, so I've been going over that for weeks in my head, you know, seeing that shot land. And so, you know, it's like after I calm down, it started to become a second nature after that. Dig that. See it before you do it. Yeah, calm definitely. down. Mike Hilton, you, you certainly did it, bro, again, and you did it impressive in here Thank tonight, you. man. So, so again, uh, all the best to you, brother. Thank you, man. Um, I want to give a uh, – first, you know, I want to thank – I want to give all glory 
honor to God, um, you know, because without him, I wouldn't be able to do this. Uh, second of all, I want to thank all my sponsors, uh, Splash Life, um, um, Empower Nutrition. Um, you know, they helped me get ready, you know, they laced me with this. Uh, my nutritionist, she helped me get ready, you know, as far as, like, getting in shape and getting the right meals for this. And, um, you know, man, I'm, I'm just blessed, man. Well, well, certainly, sir. Again, your, your people love you, man. You gave them a good show tonight, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the future. This is this is him. It's Mike Hilton, everybody. Fight time in the building, Trenton, New Jersey. Gave it to you, the victory. He's five and zero, oh, and that's that's it. Fight time. What can we do? We bring it to you, crisp and clean. Uh, no caffeine. I don't know if I can say that, but that that company isn't popping like it used to, so I'm gonna steal that. But again. For all of our comrades here tonight, for our people at Invicta.net, helping us bring it to you, Chris Donaldson, directing an excellent production. Khalif Shear, CEO of Fight Time, giving you the company, giving you the platform. You can't beat it. You won't get the coverage like this anywhere else. And again, for my comrades, Evan Smith, and again, Rango Lubin. Thank you for the fine work, gentlemen. I am Savvy Sinclair. We will see you next time around the world, 188 countries. What time was it? It was, and it is, and it will be fight time. We'll see you next time, everybody.